everyone, this is Kit Cabello with Hard Lens Media and this is Perspective. So, let's get things started. Um, you know, it just seemed like yesterday when the primaries were starting off that there was at least the idea of hope that perhaps this primary 2020 would be different. Boy, oh boy, were we wrong. And, you know, I think we're all still get, we were all still getting over the fact that um, Bernie Sanders suspended his campaign, but now apparently this week a lot of people are going to be talking about this, and that is uh, Senator Bernie Sanders has now officially endorsed Joe Biden. So that's it. The primaries are over. Um, we're now moving into the general election amidst a pandemic and a true economic depression. Um, stuff that was tailor-made, I guess, in many ways for Bernie Sanders to really hit home why we have to get rid of the two-party system, why we have to end neoliberalism. But as, alas, um, Bernie Sanders didn't walk down that path. And to be very clear, he did have a pathway to victory. He had four years to prep for this. In 2016, we all saw firsthand how corporate media, the DNC establishment, were working together to basically deny Bernie Sanders the nomination. The DNC establishment and the Clinton campaign were working together to deny Bernie Sanders the nomination. Bernie Sanders supporters, Bernie Sanders himself, his delegates, his volunteers were constantly being harassed by the establishment. And even after 2016, throughout 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, Bernie Sanders was a scapegoat for the Democrats to use because everyone still has Trump derangement syndrome, including Bernie. Because throughout this primary, when this primary got started, Bernie Sanders kept saying that, yes, Donald Trump is the most dangerous president in modern history. He's a pathological liar. We get that. Donald Trump is a horrible president and a horrible individual. But our problems didn't start with Donald Trump. Our problems started with neoliberalism and how both the Democratic and Republican establishments we're working together with big banks, with major corporations, with Wall Street executives to basically take over our government to where now most of our elected officials, 90% of the time what they're doing is talking to their donors on the phone. They're not coming up with any sort of legislation to help us out. The only legislation that they're right now proud of endorsing and supporting and right now touting until finally people realize just how bad we got screwed over was recently this aid package relief that is helping us Americans out, apparently. Even though we're getting $1,200 worth of crumbs, but that's it, a one-time payment, corporations though, are getting the massive bailout. And the thing is, when we look at somebody like Joe Biden, he has a history of creating this neoliberal system. But yet, Bernie Sanders has endorsed him. Check the video out. A feeling. So today I am asking all Americans, I'm asking every Democrat, I'm asking every independent, I'm asking a lot of Republicans to come together in this campaign to support your candidacy, oh. which I endorse, to make certain that we defeat somebody who I believe, and I'm speaking just for myself now, uh, is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. So there we have it, it's over. Um, I would say that perhaps maybe Bernie Sanders wasn't hungry enough to challenge the system. Maybe he was too afraid of the backlash from the DNC and corporate media. But at this point, who cares about corporate media or the DNC establishment or the Republican establishment? Right now, this pandemic has shown us that all these elected leaders, all these establishment people who've been in power for 10, 20 plus years don't know what they're doing. They were never ready to be leaders. They just bailed out corporations. And Joe Biden, again, let's look at his record. Bernie Sanders, are you aware that you just endorsed a guy who was on the wrong side of the civil rights movement? A guy who was against desegregation and busing. A guy who was against LGBTQ uh, rights, against women's reproductive rights. Joe Biden voted for the war in Iraq. Joe Biden, in 2005, worked with the credit card corporations to make basically forgiving student debt unattainable. The reason why we're in this situation with student debt right now is because of people like Senator Joe Biden. And on, and on top of that, Senator Joe Biden has not one, but eight women heroically stepping up and basically saying that yes, during their time with him, he has sexually assaulted, harassed, and abused them. But yet, 
Joe Biden is given a pass because everyone has Trump derangement syndrome. Everyone's afraid of Trump, including Bernie. Bernie, you had a pathway to victory. You could have rallied more people together. You could have been more aggressive. You could have really challenged the system. Even now, during this election cycle, there are examples of polling stations being shut down, voter suppression, election fraud. But yet you choose not to take that pass to be aggressive and fight back. So now looking at this, again, now that Biden's the nominee, who knows what this convention is going to look like. At this point, Bernie Sanders has just surrendered. So whatever he's going to get, who knows what that is. But I don't believe Joe Biden when he says that he's for Medicare for all or student debt forgiveness. I mean, since when? When was this? Joe Biden, not once, but twice said that he would veto Medicare for all. Joe Biden said he has no empathy for millennials. Joe Biden, the only reason why his campaign was so relevant, especially in the early days of the primary, was because of super PACs surrounding him. That's the only reason why Joe Biden's campaign was even viable in the first place, because of name recognition and the establishment surrounding their preferred choice. So we're stuck with Biden. And... Let's be very clear. Joe Biden has some cognitive issues. And even after getting the endorsement from Senator Bernie Sanders, Biden at the end of this video even says, hey, I need your help to govern. Check this video out. Well, uh, Bernie, I want to thank you uh, um, uh, for that. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, your endorsement means a great deal. It means a great deal to me. I think people are going to be surprised that we are apart on some issues, but we're awfully close on a whole bunch of others. And uh, and I think you've made. I'm, if if I am the nominee, which it looks like now, you just made me. Um, I uh, I'm going to need you not just to win the campaign, but to govern. So yeah, okay. Thank you for saying that to Bernie, but remember, Joe, you did once say that you were going to have a woman as your vice president. So, again, whatever. That, that can mean anything at this point, but the one thing I want to make clear is, you know, of all the times the establishment has been critical to Bernie Sanders uh, and even saying that he doesn't have what it takes, you know, here you have Joe Biden saying to Bernie, I need your help to govern. Whatever that is, whether that was a slip of his mind or something that he meant to say or not say, who knows? Because there are so many other videos of Joe Biden clearly having some cognitive issues. And if you don't think that Trump is not going to capitalize on Joe Biden and his gaffes and his questionable history, then I don't know what world you're living in. So I know there's going to be some more uh, progressive commentators that are going to be more aggressive angry and upset and you know what everyone should but i want to take this in a different perspective i want to ask you guys our viewers and subscribers what you really think is going to happen now that we look at this election cycle do you think people will turn out to vote for joe biden um two what is bernie sanders political legacy three what does it say about the progressive movement um four uh, is it even possible to reform any of the two political parties from what's then, like how the Justice Democrats or brand new Congress was trying to do with the Democratic Party? Um, and then finally, does this give a pathway for third parties to play a much more larger role, such as the Greens or Libertarians, People's Movement Party, uh, DSA, Socialist Alternative? Um, this, does, this does bring up the question of whether or not we can really now start investing into third parties. So... Put your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get this discussion going because I think we really need to discuss and talk about this because the establishment has made it very clear. They don't care about us. And this is to the most diehard Democratic voters and Republican voters. You can look at your elected officials with pride, but just know this. They are friends with each other. And even Bernie Sanders throughout the campaign even said that Joe Biden is his own good friend and a good person and whatever. Yeah, but let's look at the system that we're in right now. Let's look at the real problem. We have a system that's failing. Right now, 16 million people are unemployed and it's only going to get worse. But yet, 
without a fight, without a pushback, Bernie Sanders endorses Joe Biden. And that's that. And like I've always said, you know, sooner or later, you know, this movement is going to have to carry on without Bernie because Bernie will not be around forever. Put your thoughts on what you think about Joe Biden and his endorsement from Bernie Sanders. This is Kit Cabello with Hard Lens Media, and this is Perspectives. Peace, everyone.